Now, in the last video, we covered what happened to Amy's Baking Company from Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. Now, that video did amazingly in views, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that watched it and suggested me to do more videos like that. So today, I thought we should go to a different show that pretty much has the same premise as Kitchen Nightmares, that show being Bar Rescue that's hosted by John Taffer. Now, John Taffer has been in the bar rescue business for a while, and today, I really wanted to look at one restaurant in particular, which happened to be Headhunters, which aired on Season 3, Episode 2, of Bar Rescue, with the episode being titled Rock and Roaches. But before we go any further in the video, I'd like to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Morning Brew. Now, mornings for me usually consist of me waking up and immediately looking at YouTube or aimlessly scrolling through Instagram before I start my day researching for a new video. But after subscribing to Morning Brew, I start my days off scrolling through newsletters that are sent to me by Morning Brew seven days a week. See, traditional news could be boring and filled with too much information that sometimes is too hard to understand or takes way too long to read, but Morning Brew brings life to their newsletters and they get you up to speed on business, finance, and tech in just five minutes. Their newsletters are easy to read and are actually fun to read. Today when I woke up, I learned that people are spending actual money in the metaverse for virtual houses and how real estate companies and agents could cash in by going virtual and selling properties in the metaverse. I also learned that Apple CarPlay will soon add a new feature that will allow you to pay for gas from your car, which is pretty cool. Apple says that the new feature should come out later this fall. Now there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't subscribe to Morning Brew if you're interested in business, tech, or finances. It's completely free and it takes less than 15 seconds to sign up. Sign up for free by using morningbrewdaily.com forward slash bills. Thank you again to Morning Brew for sponsoring the video and now let's get back into the video. Now, Headhunters opened as a rock and roll bar and was owned by Steve Ritchie, who left the corporate life to own a bar in the early 2000s. Steve would talk about how Headhunters started out strong in 2003 when they opened as a live music performance bar, but over the years, other bars would open with the same style. Steve said that at the bar's peak, they were cashing in $70,000 a month, but after other live performance bars opened around Headhunters, Steve made the foolish decision to turn the bar into a fetish bar with live performers showing black and white adult films behind the their performances, and also having dancers dressed up very inappropriately. These changes to the bar made headhunters unappealing towards regular customers, and eventually the business took a nosedive. With the lack of business, the bar started to become unkept and dirty, which again made it even less appealing for new customers. Steve would finally tell us, the viewer, that he's in debt $250,000 before the episode would even start. Now, once the episode starts, John Taffer does recon with his wife Nicole, Joe Brooke, and Jesse Barnes, who are both experts in this episode. John and his wife Nicole end up making their way inside Headhunters because John doesn't feel comfortable about letting Nicole go into the bar by herself. Now, immediately when they step into the bar, Nicole is hit with the smell of cat pee. They are also introduced to a hard rock band called Miscarriage performing a fake miscarriage carriage on stage it's honestly pretty weird and if i was at the bar i'd literally walk in see that and then walk right out Moving on, John would be introduced to Chloe, who is one of the bartenders, and John would ask Chloe what the cat piss smell was, and she would tell John that Steve has a cat that he lets wander freely at night to kill mice at the bar. Right after this, Nicole points out that there is bugs in the bottle of liquor that Chloe was about to pour for a drink. Those bugs were cockroaches. After finding out that she almost got served cockroach liquor, Nicole leaves the bar. Then, Steve approaches John, and I shit you not, Steve looks damn near identical to William Defoe. Honestly, I had to double take because I thought it was William Defoe. Like, look, here's a picture of them side by side. Just tell me that you wouldn't see him on the street and think that Steve was William Defoe. Moving on, John goes to tell Steve that there are cockroaches in his liquor and Steve flat out denies it with a straight face and is like, there's no cockroaches in my liquor and says that there are bugs all over Austin, Texas and that there's bugs all over America. Steve and John would get into a back and forth about how dirty Steve's bar is. Now, Steve doesn't take responsibility for the issues at the bar. Steve Steve acts uncaring and just tells John that he's not being professional because he's yelling at the bar. John brings in his experts and immediately find a bunch of issues like mold on the top of the ceiling that could be going into customers drinks and 30 cockroaches in one liquor bottle. Steve would be called out for the dirtiness of the bar and instead of him being humiliated, he stood there smiling and laughing while the customers were looking at him in anger. That night, John fumigates headhunters and the next day shows the staff of headhunters all the bugs that were in the cushions at the booths and everywhere else. Steve once again puts the blame on his 
staff for not cleaning the bar, but also says that every bar in Austin has roaches. John takes the staff into the bar and tells them and Steve to clean the bar. While everyone is cleaning, we learn some even more damning information about Steve. Steve doesn't pay his workers an hourly wage and they get paid from their tips and he doesn't even have the staff on payroll. John makes the staff fill out paperwork to put them on payroll and eventually the staff begin their training and Joe tells us that they need a lot more training before they can even be successful in the bar business. Later, John and Steve would sit down and talk face to face. Steve would tell John that he's a lot like his father and how he rules with an iron fist. And then John asks Steve if his father is still alive. Steve says yes, but that he has cancer and starts to tear up. Steve talks about not wanting to be a failure, and it seems like John has made a breakthrough in Steve, but that wouldn't last long, and during the stress test, things took a turn for the worse with Steve. Steve was nowhere to be found, and when he was needed by his staff, he wouldn't help them. Eventually, John would renovate the bar and turn it into a steampunk bar called Metal and Lace. John shows the staff the inside and it's crazy how much they changed the bar in just 36 hours. John bought the bar all new sound processing equipment with a new sound system. Steve tells us that he really likes the new Metal and Lace and how Headhunters was never as nice as this new place is. The Metal and Lace grand opening ended up being a success, but Steve was still unhelpful. The episode ends with John telling Chloe that he has no confidence that Steve will change, but that she's the leader at Metal and Lace. Chloe ends the episode off by telling us that Steve is going back to his old ways and how he still hasn't put in the paperwork for the staff to be on the payroll. After Bar Rescue aired Rock and Roaches, there would be a ton of Yelp reviews that just talked about how bad Metal and Lace was even after John went to go and rescue the place. And it just shows that even with all the remodeling that John did, it can't remodel the owner and how they treat the place after John leaves and then they have no supervision and how they run their own facility. It is still crazy to me that John saved Steve's business, even though he knew that Steve was a horrible owner that only cared about himself and if his bar was cool. Steve was an irresponsible owner, and we would see that later. Now, a year after this episode ended, Headhunters would close its doors. The building would be sold while Steve was still running the bar, and issues with the lease would lead to Steve closing the bar. But Steve would also give these reasonings as to why the bar closed, all of which didn't put any responsibility on him. There's no one reason why the metal and lace closed. After John left, the wow factor went away. You know, the cost of doing business went up. The city's growing. The laws work against businesses. Taxes go up. Bitchy customers, bitchy staff, bitchy musicians. They took away our parking. Even the fire department took away our, our heat. It was not autocratic or, you know, or bureaucratic. It was an environmental decision. All these things are demons and dragons. <laughs> you know, when they're swinging their wanger around, it, female customers coming down the street, that's not our fault. I could just bore you with all these, I'd say there's probably 15 reasons, but future looks bright for Steve. I always land on my own feet. Eventually, we would find out in a follow-up episode that Steve ended up being a medical consultant walking door to door and how Steve was trying to open up headhunters in a different area, but that Steve has still not opened up another bar. We would also find out from this follow-up episode that Chloe left the bar four months after John left and how Looney helped Steve move the equipment out of headhunters and into a storage unit with the promise that Steve was going to open up headhunters somewhere else that September. We would also find out that Steve owed Looney $8,000. John's crew would have a sit down interview with Steve, Looney, and Chloe, where the two of them tell Steve that he's one of the biggest issues, if not the biggest issues, as to why the bar closed. Looney would ask Steve one last time for his money, and Steve would stop the interview and tell them all to leave because he needed to catch a flight. After this episode, John would become more careful on which bars he would actually transform and which ones he would walk away from. I believe this would be the 11th restaurant that closed down at this point in 2014 after John Taffer came in, did his whole training, and then remodeled the place. Again, I do feel bad for the employees that worked for Steve because it has to be annoying to work all this time at this bar that doesn't get business, and then they only get paid in tips, which I'm pretty sure is illegal, and if it's not, then it should be. Because even now, if you are a waitress at a facility or at a business or a restaurant, then you still get paid like a minimum wage, even with the tips. And even then it's pretty, it's pretty annoying because you have to do all this extra work, like cleaning and then doing all these, these extra things, which is should be in your job description, but it's not if you're not on an hourly wage. That's what Chloe was trying to say in this episode when Steve was getting upset, saying that it's not his fault that the bar was so dirty. And then Chloe would just tell him that like, you don't pay me an hourly wage. I get paid by the customers. So she gets paid to make the drinks. That's the price that Steve paid by not giving them an hourly wage. 
If you haven't seen Bar Rescue before, I highly advise you to go check it out. I wouldn't say it's as good as Kitchen Nightmares, but I do really like John Taffer and how he has many different sides to him and his facial expressions when he's like talking because sometimes he'll just explode or he'll just be like extremely nice. And just when you're watching this, just look at his facial expressions and trust me, you will die laughing throughout the episodes. I did it. My girlfriend did it. We watched at least like three seasons or four seasons just binge watching it and at the time it was one of our favorite shows i do like again that john isn't just one dimensional like how gordon ramsay is usually like angry or if he's not angry he's still kind of like frustrated like throughout the whole entire episode where john gives a different side to how he is and how he is as a business person now after this episode i was trying really hard to find out what happened to steve ritchie after his time on the show but i couldn't find anything at all I even looked on Reddit to see if they found out what happened to Steve and there was nothing. The dude just vanished. Even looking on other social media platforms, I couldn't find anything, which was weird because Steve mentions to Looney during the interview that he saw what Looney was writing on Facebook, but again, I couldn't find his Facebook account. But I was able to find somebody else's account that was on the show. And that person happened to be Chloe. On her social media account, it seems like she's moved on from her time on the show, and it seems like she's very content with life right now and just having fun, which is always good to see. Steve was one of the craziest owners that John has ever had to deal with and it's crazy to me that Steve could be so delusional about his bar and how good he thought it was when he's the one who reached out to John Taffer to save his bar. Steve is a good example of how to not run a bar and his lack of respect towards his employees was the icing on the cake and that eventually made his bar go way under to a point where he had to sell it and never look back. I couldn't find much of Steve Ritchie online, but if you did or if, if you can after this episode, leave it down below and I will gladly look at your comment. But this has been the end of what happened to Headhunters after Bar Rescue. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want me to do more videos like this, make sure to comment which episode or which show you want me to do next. Again, another big thank you to Morning Brew for sponsoring the video. And thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.